Hello, 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 and welcome back to Dilzim's Let's Play of the Kingdom of Loathing. I was in the middle of doing my daily dungeon when I ran across something you actually need to see. As you can see, I am fighting Arg, 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 Arg the Dire Hell Seal. Rather unexpectedly, dark storm clouds roll in from the north, blotting out the sun. There's a sudden crash of thunder, and you hear somewhere, close by, a bestial howling that sends shivers down your spine. Adrenaline pumping, you try to pinpoint the source of the noise. You hear it again, closer this time, and in stereo, your stomach turns to ice. Could it be... Lightning strikes, momentarily blinding you, and then there he is, towering over you, the ravenous two-headed monstrosity, arg -arg, arg 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 the dire hell seal. If murderous beasts like Gorgolok can be said to have lieutenants, then arg -arg, arg 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 is it. They say that he was the only seal ever to challenge Gorgolok's authority as alpha male and survive the ensuing battle. His black hide is scarred from the dozens, hundreds of attempts made to destroy him by your northern kinsmen, none of whom came back alive. Here and there, an ancient broken spear juts out of Argargargarg's hide as a testament to his indomitability. Two pairs of hellishly glowing red eyes scares at, stare, glare at you. Two horribly fanged maws drool. This is probably going to suck big time. It's definitely going to suck big time because he just did 52 hit points of damage by uh, with his slavering maw. He pulls a spear from his hide, his hide and hurls it at you, sparing you like an asparagus. And I was already hardly poisoned at all, and I was in the middle of the daily dungeon, so I've only got 22 hit points left. If I don't actually kill him in one shot here, I'm toast. Oh, excellent. Good job, Stuzevelt. Thrust smack, it's all in the mind and in the face of your opponent. Let's get him again. I won! Ha 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 ha! Good job, Stuzevelt. You are an excellent levitating potato. So, I have won the fight. I have acquired... A secret tropical island volcano lair map. This nautical chart, which you acquired from an assassin sent after you by your nemesis, depicts several miles of ocean off the eastern coast of Loathing. Prominently f featured on the map is a skull-shaped island labeled Danger, Secret Tropical Island Volcano Lair. This looks like the sort of thing the guys back at the guild would be interested in seeing. Not that they've been all that helpful so far. I also got Argargargargarg's Fang. This is a fang you yanked from Argargargarg's -arg -arg -arg's mouth as a trophy. I have to ask, though, if you're going to go through all that trouble, why'd you only take one? He had, like, four of the things, at least. Ah, oh, well. It's got a selling price of 4,000 meat and cannot be traded. I also have an adorable seal larva. It turns Argargarg... -arg -arg, turns out Argargargarg -arg 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 must have been female and a mother to boot, because after you killed him... er, her, the seal larva jumped off her back and crawled onto your foot. You're going to stomp on the disgusting thing, but look at those big, cute puppy dog eyes. Aw, how could you ever squish such an adorable fang slug vermin like this? So it hatches into a seal larva. Cute little bloodsucker. Kills enemies with fangs and adorableness. <laughs> okay. So, let's go first off into my inventory. My skills are currently unavailable. I'm confused. Oh, it's because I'm hardly poisoned at all, maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure why my skills list is unavailable, but uh, anyway, we will go into my inventory. We'll go look at the recent items, and we will put the adorable seal larva in the terrarium. I decide to name him Huguenold. I will take him with me now. Because why not, really? I might as well. Okay, we'll go back to my inventory. I cannot seem to smith Argargargargs fang. Argargargargs. <laughs> well, I want to see. Can I? Can I smith Argargargargs fang? No, I cannot. Okay. All right. Also, I discovered it's poor October 8th, but I'm going to go to my campsite first, rest up a bit, and then head back to the Daily Dungeon just to finish up there. We will proceed forward cautiously. Lose a bunch of hit points. Could have been worse, though. I'm pretty proud of yourself for remembering to protect yourself from the heat. I get that because I have some uh, some resistance now from, I believe, the uh, the necklace. Got a jug o magicalness. I'm fighting an apathetic lizard man. Who I beat up, but I get some flavorless gruel. I will bash down the door. All right. We'll bash down this door, too. Ow, that hurt. Well, we will rest in my house, and rest in my house, and rest in my house one more time. We are fighting a saber-toothed lime. We'll beat that up. Oh, holy cow. It gives me stuff and 15 damage. 
Awesome. Another ring of half fast regeneration. We will bash down. Oof. The doors are not being so kind today. Okay, fitting a dairy ooze. Huguenold uh, is continues to be helpful. Okay, we will adventure again in the daily dungeon. Ow! One more time. All right, I got my fat loot token. Okay, let's go to my campsite and heal up some. Now, as you saw, it's Porktober, and I can do some. It's Porktober eighth, and I can do some trick or treating. So let us put on the swashbuckling getup. And let's go do some trick or treating in Seaside Town. But first, let's go to the Brotherhood of the Smackdown. It's good to see you in P one piece, Dilzim. I hope Nemesis is the Nemesis' thugs aren't giving you too much trouble. No, you reply. I think I've seen the last of them, thankfully. Have a look at this. I got it off of their leader. He handed over the secret tropical island volcano lair map. Ah, so it was a secret tropical island volcano lair after all, eh? Hmm, the markings on this map indicate treacherous waters. You're going to need a sturdy ship and an experienced crew to get there. Right, I was hoping you could lend me one? I'm afraid not. We have a small ship that we use to run errands and so forth, but it isn't robust enough to make this trip. You'll need to seek out transportation elsewhere. That figures. Of course it does. Well, let's go back to Seaside Town. Let's trick or treat here. Avast ye land lover, ye filthy builder, at shake the hook of Morgan, the most feared pirate captain ever to sail the seven seas. Why, if ye were on my crew, ye'd have walked the plank or swung from the yard arm by now, savvy? Some day perhaps you'll come and sail the bounding main with me, but for now, yo ho ho, and this I got a bottle of rum. <laughs> Fighting Carl Blarf, neighborhood cop. Chubby dude on a weird chariot like scooter pulls up in front of you. Hey, you kid, stop in the name of the suburban neighborhood task force. You look around, but you're the only kid in sight. Is there a problem, officer? I guess? You ask, no, don't you kid, sass me. I know your type. You're out here stealing candy, aren't you? No, they give it away for Halloween. It's, it's They give it away for free. It's Halloween. You're darn tootin' it's Halloween, and I guess you kids are out to trick some tricks, eh? Spray paint some garbage to garage doors, lob some eggs, put a zip tie can and a can of air freshener, and chuck it through an open car window. Are you trying to give me ideas? You ask. I knew it. You kids are up to no good. I'm taking you in. Come along quietly and don't make me shine my flashlight in your eyes and tell you to stop. Oof. It's all so tough. I only managed to inflict five damage. Wow. But he's not doing a lot of damage to me, and I'm doing ton of sleaze damage, so that's always nice. I hear strains of mellow music in the distance. Not quite sure what's going on there. Got a Swizzler. You're fighting Ricky Unscrupulous, the miscreant. You hear a hissing sound coming from the front porch as you walk up to the house. Maybe the owner has one of those spooky snake Halloween decorations. Or maybe they just have an actual snake. You approach with caution, only to find the hissing is coming from a can of spray paint, which is followed by profanity coming from the kid holding the can. Trick or treat, you little nerd, he says, aiming a rotten egg at you. Club him upside the head. Oof. Let's try this one. Got a box of dweebs. Oh, hey, are you here for the Halloween party? There's a game of ogres and oubliettes starting in the dining room, and out back people are hitting each other with plastic swords. And if you want to play Alice's Army, there's a tournament going on down the base. Oh, you just want candy. Well, okay, here you go. We got an, uh, another pirate captain. Another mall cop here. Or neighborhood cop, rather. And beat him up. Davy Insolent. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Good job, Huguenot. Awesome. Come on, computer. You can do it. Oh, I already won the fight. That's why it's not working. Got another box of dweebs from some dweeb. Rudd Charles Neighborhood Cup. Got some milk studs and another bottle of rum. Sweet deal. Okay. Well, let's go into my inventory and eat. 
I have some flavorless gruel. Their dehydrated caviar is only one. The ballroom blintzes are three apiece. We will eat three of those. And a dire fudge sickle. Awesome. Okay. Now the Council of Loathing wants to talk to me, so let's go talk to them. You still have unfinished business with the Trapper. The High Lord, Highland Lord Black Angus needs your help, adventurer. Something is amiss, adventurer. The nearby plains are filling up with giant piles of garbage, and despite our best efforts, it keeps falling from the sky faster than we can clean it up. We need you to figure out where it's coming from and put a stop to it. Okay. i got a few options here, but um, first things first, I actually want to go to the mysterious island of mystery and go to the obligatory pirate's cove. Bartleby's Bargain Bookstore. I can get a pirate pamphlet. Okay. I can get a book of pirate insults, which is a reusable combat item. Or an abridged dictionary, which is a quest item. We will ignore that for now. We will go to Barney's. You're fighting a tipsy pirate. A pirate walks up to you, swaying visibly and hiccuping. Never look directly into the sun, he says, hiccuping. <laughs> and make sure that you always wear clean underpants in case you get in an accident. <laughs> and when you cut an onion, make sure you do it under running water so you don't cry, Sevy. Thanks for the tips, you say, but he thinks you're being sarcastic and assumes a fighting stance. Gets the jump on me. Oof. He tiptoes behind you and breaks a bottle over your head. Huguenald, you are awesome. Fighting a touchy pirate. As you walk into the bar, you bump into a pirate sitting at a bar stool near the door. Hey, watch where you be walking, you scurvy car, he shouts. Hey, I'm sorry, man. You reply, let me buy you a drink. I don't be needing no charity from no lily-livered land lover. First you bump my elbow bone, then you treat me like a hobo. Well, I won't be standing for that, sure as me name be Barnacle Bill. Actually, another pirate says, that guy over there would be Barnacle Bill. You're Tetchy Tom, remember? That's it! Tom shouts and prepares to throw down with you. He knocks the top off a bottle and slashes your solar plexus with it. Gah, what a jerk. All right. Fighting a toothy pirate, you're temporarily blinded by the flash of a mouthful of gold teeth. The pirate attached to the teeth sees you squint and grins. Wow, you must be a field day for the tooth fairy. What did he call me? He says, unable to see your comma placement. Great, looks like you're getting in another fight. Got a cocktail napkin, which is a combat item. You wander through the bar, avoiding a pair of pirates who are arm wrestling, dodging darts, and looking for a quiet corner where you can sit down for a while and try to get rid of some of the extra R's you picked up. You rush by a pirate sitting in an underlit booth, his face hidden by shadow, which, given what you've seen by the pirate so far, is probably for the best. Hey there, swabby, he whispers, grabbing your elbow. Do you want to hear a tale of blood-curdling terror and betrayal most foul? A tale born in the salty maw of the merciless sea? A tale that's, well, really unpleasant, I guess, would be the main point I'm trying to make here. Uh, no thanks, you say. I was just looking for the bathroom. Be ye sure. It's a pretty entertaining tale, and by the end, and then at the end of it, I say, and it's all true, so says Captain Karen Karonk. <laughs> Captain Karonk. So swears I on me life, and then I squints at ye and pulls out this as proof. He rolls out a scroll of parchment across the table, and you see a landmass drawn on the paper with a dotted line that marks a trail. You bend over to get a closer look. So, Billy's mum told him to come straight home after school, but he went all over town and said, you sigh, I say, and sigh. That's pretty impressive. Arr, that be the wrong parchment, here be the right one. See, it's a treasure map. What do ye make of it? Well, I can make a hat or a little boat or a pterodactyl with belay that builds water. This be a treasure map, and if ye follow it and find the treasure I seek, ye can join my true crew. What say ye? All right. Well, I've got a usable quest item. Let's go in and check that out. All right. You're fighting a booty crab. 
You follow Captain Karonk's map to the spot on the shore marked with an X. You see a big mound of, mound of sand in approximately the right place. You get on your hands and knees and start digging through it for treasure. After a few minutes of this, you encounter something hard beneath the sound. Yippee, you say, the treasure, but your celebration is short-lived as the hard thing you encounter turns out to be the hard carapace of a fearsome booty crab. Your mother told you about these things. She said, now listen to me, young man. You might think that booty is nice, but sometimes you'll encounter booty that isn't so nice. And if you get too close to some not nice booty, you're bound to be attacked by booty crabs. Guess she was right. Well, let's thrust smack it. Oof. It shakes several of its legs, flicking nasty crab goo all over you. All right, I got Captain Karunk's nasty booty. Oh, I'm not even going to think too hard about that one. Let's head back to Barney's bar. All right, so you place the nasty treasure chest on the table in front of Captain Karunk. He inspects it suspiciously, then smiles a broad, toothless smile. He catches your reaction to his grotesque gums and grimaces alliteratively. Yar, this be me nasty booty, and I thank ye for retrieving it. I trust it wasn't too bootylicious for ye to handle. He sighs, rests his chin in his hands, and continues. But as you can see, I have some other things on my mind than treasure at the moment. The other night I went over to the frat house for a kegar, and sometime during the night some bilge rat hit me over the head with a shingle and knocked me out. When I came back to me senses, me wooden teeth were gone. I can't face my crew without them. Think of the jokes they'd make. So you say, I suppose there's no chance you'll get up and walk the half mile to the frat house, ask for your teeth back, and meet me back here? Well, I'd love to do just as you say, the captain responds, but me bum, he's been acting up, and I think I might be coming down with a bit of a cold, and I haven't got me land legs back. All right, you say and sigh. I'll go get your teeth back from the frat boys, if you promise me that we can go after that. Upon me word as a pirate, the captain says, here be the blueprints for the frat house, so ye can conduct a proper search. All right, well, let's take a look at the blueprints. You hike over to the Arkish frat house and hide in the bushes. You look over the blueprint blueprints and see several approaches to getting in and getting Captain Crunk's dentures back. You dress up like a frat boy and try to waltz through the front door. You can pretend to be delivering something and get them to let you in the side door. You can go all pig panther on it and try to sneak through the backyard. You're making about halfway through the frat house before you're accosted by a wandering drunk frat arc. Hey, who are you? What are you doing in our yard, brah? I'm uh, a new pledge, you reply, and I'm out here cleaning up the um, all-male oil wrestling pit because uh, Brett told me to. I don't think so, brah, he canters. When Brett makes some lowly scumbag pledge clean something, he makes that pledge wear a maid's outfit. You see a frilly skirt on you, brah? I sure don't. The orc apparently knocks you unconscious and throws your limp form back over the wall. Well, at least you hope that's all he did in retrospect. Well, let's go back and let's equip my normal stuff. I'm pretty sure I do not have... Oh, I do have a frat boy ensemble. Alright. Let's go back into my inventory, or into my items here. And use the blueprints and we will attempt a frontal assault. You march up to the front door of the frat house and knock loudly. A muscle-bound frat orc opens it, and before he can speak, you say, Thanks for hooking a bra, bra. I totally lost my key, bra, and shuffle past him. Once you're inside the frat house, it's a simple matter of making your way down to the basement and receiving Karunk's dentures from the frat boy's ridiculous trophy case. I got Captain Karunk's dentures. These are Captain Karong's wooden dentures. Very few people actually get dentures carved out of wood because they're not willing to put up with dentures carved out of soap while the wooden ones are being prepared. Okay, we will go back. We will put my previous outfit back on. And then the swashbuckling get up. And then we will go back to Barney's bar. You toss the dentures down on Captain Karonk's table. Here are your wooden teeth, you say. There's some weird stains on them, but I'm hoping those were there when you lost them. Now I get to join your crew and so sail, right? Well, almost, the captain says, barring his wooden teeth in a crooked grin. But you gave me your word. I gave you my word as a pirate, he says. And part of the pirate's code explicitly states that a verbal contract with a pirate isn't worth the paper it be printed on. Er, on which it be printed. Anyway, only masters of the ancient art of insult beer pong be truly worthy of joining my crew. You'll have to feed Ricketts, the current reigning champion, if you want to sail with Captain Karonk. You turn and address the bar. Hey, does anyone else have a crew I can join? A general chorus of no for you, no noobs. Did you just and know how to bilge? Answers you. You shrug and turn back to the captain. Okay, fine. Let's get this over with. 
You spot a small crowd of people milling around in the corner of the bar and wander over to see what all the hoopla is about. They're standing around a large plank of wood resting on some barrels with a dozen red cups arranged on top. A pirate presides over the scene, tossing a small white ball up in the air and catching it as he surveys the crowd, sneering, Bah, have none of ye lily-livered scary rags, scowly wags, the brazies to challenge old Don Ricketts, ye sniveling cravens. Too yellow to face the master, are ye, ye spindle-shanked vermin? There's hardly any point, Ricketts, says another pirate. Not a man and jack of us has managed to beat you at beer pong at months, and we're tired of your insulting ways besides. It's insult, beer pong, ye dunder-headed git. That's the point. Well and all, but you needn't have said that about me, Granny. That was right uncalled for. Burn me and sink me, growls Ricketts. Ain't there not, is there not air when ain't a lukewarm pansy? Let's try to step up here. You push through the crowd and look Ricketts in the eyes. I reckon I'll take you on, ye scurvy sea dog. You growl as menacingly as you can. Ricketts laughs mockingly. So the land lover wants to face me, eh? All right, whelp, I'll take your challenge. Beat me and I'll give ye my title, by gad. He laughs again. Not that ye have a bloodless bastard's chance of defeating me, Mark ye. Not in a month of Sundays. Bring it, you, um, jerk, you reply. The assembled crowd sighs and shakes their heads. Ricket smirks at you as he dribbles his ping-pong ball on the table. Are ye ready for your grub and spread? I'll give ye no quarter for being green by odds blood. Well, you reply, we better get over quick before you become completely incomprehensible. The pirate lobs his ball at your cups. Your face is as foul as that of a drowned goat, he taunts with a sneer. Um, how appropriate you fight like a cow. Look, a three-headed monkey. I'm rubber in your glue. I know you are, but what am I? First, you better stop waving it around like a feather duster. Well, let's try the first one. Shaken by Ricketts' word, your faltering attempt at a retort proves ineffective. The ball sails directly into one of your cups, and the pirate sneers as you fish it out and start shrinking. By my bones, I knew ye were a way-faced scupper lout when I first laid eyes on ye dock hawk that ye are. He laughs. You attempt to make up for the slip, but it's too late. Your nerve has been broken, and you find yourself soon pushing your way through the crowd, away from the beer pong table and the jeering catcalls of old Don Ricketts. I can adventure again. Okay, same thing's going to happen. I think I want to go. Let's back off. Let's go back to the obligatory Pirate's Cove. Let's go to the bargain bookstore and buy the big book of pirate insults. Now let's try it again. Far, from a far corner of the bar, you hear someone say, drunkenly singing off-key to the Crooner Classic, It's Completely Ordinary. Great, looks like they have a karaoke machine at this bar. After having your ears assaulted by a couple more horrible performances, this isn't one good one by a pirate who gave a shout-out to the whole crew of the Penzance, the, finding, the finest sailing vessel in these eleven seas. You decide to take a turn at the mic, and you check out the song listings. Wow, what a crappy selection. There are only three songs left that haven't been sung. Sing the high-pitched, densely harmonic Knob Goblin Rhapsody, sing the ridiculously long ballad Banana Cream Pie, or sing the Southern Hades tune Friends in Low Places. Let's try the last one. Uh, you step on the stage, affect a twang, and begin to sing, So let me tell ya, ma'am, I am eternally damned. My soul is in Satan's lair. Uh, you try to get into the song, but you're so nervous you can barely hold the microphone. Before the first chorus hits, a near-fatal attack of stage fright rushes through your body, you drop the microphone and flee the stage directly into a tetchy pirate. Well, let's beat him up. All right. Now I'm fighting a tipsy pirate. Now I'm fighting an unconscious tipsy pirate. Fighting a toothy pirate. More rum. Excellent. Certainly no complaints about rum. All right. Good old Huguenald. More tipsy pirates. Okay. Touchy pirate. Toothy pirate. I just want to go back to the insult game here. In the corner of the bar, you see two manly pirates having an argument about which one of them is more manly. I be far more masculine than ye be, ye land lover. One says, I only stop drinking when I'm fighting, and I only stop fighting or drinking when I'm wenching. Ha! The other one replies, I can fight, drink, and wench at the same time, and occasionally do I punch the wrench. And only occasionally do I punch the wench, sip my opponent, and do something unfortunate with the bottle of grog. Fellows, fellows, I think you're overlooking an important point here. Stereotypical co concepts of gender roles only serve to facilitate the compartmentalization of society, fostering the myth of the other and leading to alienation, and you break off as you see both of them staring at you looking confused. Since you know that with manly types, looking confused usually leads to face-punching the object to the confusion, you quickly contain tech 
you quickly change tactics. Er, what I mean is neither of ye be as manly as me, yar, and to prove it I'll challenge ye to a drinking contest. The manly pirates quickly agree to test their drinking skills against yours. Since you're not entirely sure you can beat them, how are you going to pull this off? Well, let's try cheating. You raise your glass, mime drinking, and then pi quietly pour the glass out under the table. You feel pretty monstrous while you're getting away with it until one of your opponents notices his shoes are soaking wet. The ensuing bar brawl, brawl uh, proves a pretty effective workout, all things considered. Sorry, got distracted there for a second. Fighting a tipsy pirate with a bottle of rum. I'm uh, actually, uh, something's come up. I'm going to have to go. I will finish this day a little bit later. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. And I am back. I just had to answer a few questions about uh, a couple of upcoming days. I was working on Bernie's Bar. Got another tipsy pirate here. Ooh, double rum. Sweet deal. All right. Not a single man has faced me and lived to tell the tale. How appropriate, you fight like a cow. Nope, that's wrong. Okay, well, let's try again. Do you hear that, you craven blackguard? It'd be the sound of your doom. Look, a three-headed monkey. No, okay. Well, let's try. I know you are, but what am I? No. Maybe I'm rubber in your glue. Your face is foul, so that is a drowned coat. No, okay. Well, first you better stop waving around like a feather duster. Okay. None of that seems to work. Okay. Let's go adventure in the Orcish frat house and let's use the big book of pirate insults I'll teach you the meaning of fear ye gutless coward okay let's try it again okay we've already used one of those insults this fight the second insult just wouldn't be as insulting okay so now let's see if I go back to Barney's bar. No. Okay. I've only got five. I know you are, but what am I? No. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do. Pirate pamphlet gives you moxie plus 10%. Okay. Well, let's see here. Okay. Hmm. I really don't know what to do. None of that seems to be working. So, let's go put my put my other stuff back on and go Okay, let's go instead to Mount McLarge Huge and adventure in the goatlet. Fighting a drunk goat. This goat is as drunk as a skunk, which means he's considerably more drunk than a skunk who is drunk as a goat. Ow, oh, he gets the jump on you, he gores you with his horns. To be fair, he was actually just running for the bathroom and stumbled into you. <laughs> Alright, well, I got a bottle of whiskey from a drunk goat. Fighting a saber-toothed goat. This is a fearsome saber-toothed goat. He's fierce, but handy if you need a can of tomato juice opened and then eaten. Well, let's beat him up then. Ooh, I got a figurine of a cold seal. <laughs> this is a clay figurine of a seal. It's cold to the touch, like some sort of funky Medina. <laughs> a drunk goat. All right, Huguenauld. Okay, more cold seals. 
Another bottle of whiskey. Dairy goat. I didn't even get... Oh, you suck. I didn't even get goat cheese. Alright. It's so adorable. But still no goat cheese. I need more goat cheese. A saber-toothed goat. A drunk goat. Dairy goat. No goat cheese. More cold seal figurines. Beat up the drunk goat. Alright. Saber-toothed goat. More cold seals. Come on now. This is just getting silly. This is a dairy goat. Insert a pun on utterly and utterly if you're kind of the kind of guy who doesn't get punched in the face enough. <laughs> Let's see if there's some saber-toothed goat. Ooh, I got three wedges of goat cheese. Well, look at that. Excellent. Now we'll go into the It's Not Yours, It's Mine. I am fighting a grumpy seven-foot dwarf. This seven-foot dwarf is in a foul mood, which is another way of saying that he is a seven-foot dwarf. Oh, I dropped my hammer of smiting on my kidney. That hurt. I'm fighting a dopey seven-foot dwarf. This seven-foot dwarf summit has slipped over his head, and he can't reach it to take it off. You start to laugh, and then his random lurching leads him to stagger straight at you. All right. I beat him up. Beat him up good. Fighting a sleepy seven-foot dwarf. This seven-foot dwarf is sleeping on the job. Unless his job is sleeping, but that'd be a pretty weird job for a miner to have. You're probably not going to be able to leave without waking him up, so you decide to fight him. All right. Another grumpy seven-foot dwarf. Okay. More seven-foot dwarfs. A dopey seven-foot dwarf. All right. Let's uh, give him the stick. I acquire a miner's helmet. Aha, excellent. That is part of the mining gear. Beating up a seven foot dwarf. Well, let in the one of the dusty tussle, tunnels of It's Not Yours, It's Mine, you find a very tall locker because he's the kind of adventurer who always checks the coin return of a payphone just in case you jiggle the handle. It turns out the locker's owner actually forgot to lock it, making it, I suppose, less of a locker and more of a present for you. Would you like to take advantage of his absent-mindedness? Open the locker, or get to the chopper, which is outside. I will open the locker. I have a seven-foot dwarven mattock. Grumpy seven-foot dwarf, I just need some pants. A sleepy seven-foot dwarf. Aha, excellent. Now I can go into my inventory, put on the mining gear, and we will adventure again and it's not yours, it's mine. Dressed in your mining gear, you stride past the seven-foot dwarfs who guard it's not yours, it's mine. You walk in deep into the one of the shafts and find a nice, quiet place to mine. So I can mine here and cost an adventure. You start digging, you cut away with all your might, you succeed in cutting away some rock, you accidentally inhale a bunch of dust, making your voice sound all husky and cool, and probably eventually giving you cancer. Okay. Hit the rock with all my might. I pan through the rock, I knock loose, and come lick some meat tailings. Some more, more dust, dusty voice here. Oh, I stumble upon a vein of meat. I acquire three meat stacks. Uh, some more meat tailings. I acquire a stone of extreme power. The stone is very magical. Shiny, too. It's a meat pasting component and a meat smithing component. More cancer. More meat stacks. Sweet. You indeed succeed in cutting away some rock. Being down here where it's quiet really makes you think. Or maybe it's the hypoxia setting in. You start digging, you swing your rock. You know, an, inex an inexpert swing of your mattock causes a tremendous cave-in. Ten wizardliness. 103 hit points and I'm now beaten up. Let's go rest up a bit. Okay. Ten cheek. I need three chunks of chrome ore, but I am now beaten up again. I got a lodestone. Uh -huh. This is an offhand item which gives ten, plus 10% ten meat for monsters. Sometimes, when a vein of underground meat is subjected to just the right combination of intense pressure and cosmic radiation, it becomes a lodestone, a magical meat magnet, and lucky you, you found one. Cool. 
another stone of extreme power, and three meat stacks, and I am out of adventures. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you've seen today, feel free to uh, like, and uh, subscribe, comment, any of those things. Tell me what I should name Huguenold, my adorable seal larva. Um, most importantly, though, I hope you had a wonderful evening, and we will see you tomorrow. This is Still Sim, signing out.